You're a covenant person. God loves you. God has a plan for your life. God has been opening doors for you all your life. God is covering your, he's got your back. He's covering for you every step of the way. God ha, doesn't matter how low you've sunk. God has a bright light out there and he's, and he's showing the way and he has huge angels that are fighting on your behalf. You are a covenant person and the devil wants to be your slave driver. He wants you to worry, worry, worry about this and about that, to relive scenes from the past. Satan wants you to be tormented night and day with not knowing, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What You are a covenant. You're in covenant, a covenant child of the living God. You're in covenant with him. He... He, nothing that he wouldn't do for you to be able to rise above. Mm. Don't believe. Don't believe the lies of the enemy. We have to, in as much as we refute every theory and reasoning and high and lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, lead them captive unto the obedience of Christ the Messiah. That's Second Corinthians 10, chapter, uh, 10, verse 4 and 5. Leading captive every... You know, I was, years ago, when I first got saved, uh, I was uh, 44 years old. That was 37 years ago. That makes me 81. And I had been involved in the New Age and involved in all kinds of worldly nonsense. Just, I thought I was such a smart, worldly woman. But, oh, oh, wow, what mercy God showed for me. But anyway, I had a teacher, a Bible teacher, a wonderful woman uh, who had been through all the New Age things that I had. And she told me that I needed to take a Sabbath day myself, not Sundays, but a day just, just to get to know God. And this particular day, I was tormented by thoughts. I mean, I was so tormented by, by, I mean, it was just a Niagara Falls of torment, torment. And I, I decided to, I had learned about that Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse four and five, I think it's second Corinthians, maybe it's first, but chapter 10, verse three, four and five, four and five. And I started reading it in the Amplified Bible in as much as I refute every argument and theory and reasoning and proud and lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and lead captive every thought and purpose unto the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. And I said that scripture and from the Amplified Version, walking back, I was alone in my, the apartment I lived in, shared with my sister, and I was walking diagonally across our living room. And I read it because my mind was, was a mess. And I just knew that I knew, I mean, I, I just felt like I would die with all these thoughts. And I walked diagonally back and forth over and over again. It seemed to me I walked back and forth for an hour and a half. I do not know. I did not time it. But I didn't stop because I had no alternative. If I stopped, the thoughts would torment me more. So I kept going with that same scripture in the Amplified Version. And in as much as I refute every argument, argument and theory and reasoning. What does a Satan have? Arguments, theories and reasonings. And proud and lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and lead them captive unto the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. So I kept saying it and saying, and do you know, Satan gave up. At the end, I don't know when the end was. I don't know how long I was walking. But I know that all of a sudden, the peace of God consumed me. And I'm, 
I was reminded, now I'm reminded of that scripture, um, I believe it's Psalm 126, verse 3, and as much as I, no, um, great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing, nothing shall rattle them, nothing shall offend them, nothing shall upset them, nothing shall, uh, shall rob them of their peace. And that's what happened. All of a sudden, the peace of God overwhelmed me. And I realized now that Satan was my slave driver. I lived a life, a Christian life, but I worried and I worried and I worried. And I always thought that I could do this better or that better. Or what's the next thing? Worry, constantly worrying. And it was nothing more than Satan being my slave driver. And, and what I needed was a revelation of what it means to be in covenant with God. I mean, every mistake I make, he cleans it up. Every, every bad thing I do, he's already paid the price for it. I remember that one time I remembered... I, I, one time I was remembering all these things that I got away with, you know, that I, in the world when I was in all these dangerous things I did that I got away with. And after I finished thinking about all these things I got away with, all of a sudden I felt the Lord speaking to my heart, Ellen, you didn't get away with a thing. I paid for it all. And so now I just am realizing more and more every day, I am a covenant woman. Everything I do is blessed, past, present, and future. I'm in covenant with God. And so are you. You're in covenant with the living God who is opening doors for you, shining a light on your path, putting opportunities out in front of you. Mm. And I just heard this wonderful thing from Jonathan Kahn. You know, if you're a traveler and you have money from nations, you know you will never go back to where that currency is no longer any good. What would you, what would you do if you knew you were going to another country, but you could not take any of the currency from the old country with you? When, or no, no, no belong. You couldn't take anything with you to this new country you're going to. What would you do? Well, you would sell everything, give everything you had to get this new currency because you know you're going to this place where you'll never come back from and where they only have one kind of currency and you'd do everything in your power to get that kind of currency. Well, that's, that's what you and I are going to do. We're going to heaven and we can't take any of the currency from this, from this, these other nations that we might have traveled to or from this, this land we live in right now. We can't take any of it with us. So we gotta, we gotta make sure we get, we convert all the currency we have right now into the currency of our destination. And that's all our time, our talent, and our treasure. That's what we can take with us. Praise God. Peace like a river. Covenant. Covenant. Covenant with God. Let him show us how to convert all our time, our talent, and our treasure into currency we can take with us. He wants to do that. He's real. And he, uh, he's, he's just, well, he loves you. He loves you as much as he loves me. He loves me more than anybody in the world. I, I feel in my heart, but I know he loves you because you're his, his, oh, you're his masterpiece. You are his masterpiece. If you had any idea, no matter what shapes, shape or size, no matter who you are, you are his masterpiece. You can do things that God has ordained for you to do that no one else in the entire world can do.